All right, guys, today we're talking about real-time data with Google Sheets and Unity together. Today, we're gonna to be going through how to take a sheet in Google Sheets and utilize that information into a Unity application. Now, there are so many different use cases for this, things like including translating information, including getting stock information from Google Sheets' own calculations, and then bringing that in to your own Unity project. Where you use that in Unity itself, look, there are so many different possibilities. It could just be straight up showing the information to the screen, which is what we're gonna to do today as a basic sort of output. But you know, you could bring this into augmented reality, you could bring this into your gaming engine. Like there are just so many different options to once you have this ability to take real-time data, how you use it is then up to you. So whether it's weather, it's uh, player information, like there are so many different options. Anyway, I wanted to give the groundwork behind actually getting that information, figuring out how do you configure your Google Sheet, and then how you bring that into Unity and utilize that information. So, let's get started with the Google Sheet side. Okay, so let's talk about Google Sheets to start with. Now, Google Sheets, we're gonna to utilize to store our information that we wanna then send into Unity. Now, this could be to whatever level you want, in this version of things, we're gonna be utilizing just one sheet that is a table of information. And that is only because it is the simplest way and form of actually bringing stuff in. So let's say that we have um, some products. So we've got the name of the product, the quantity in stock, and the price. And so what we're gonna be doing for this is we're gonna say, um, I've got a balloon for sale, I've got uh, a map for sale, and I've got an umbrella for sale. And we're gonna say that we have uh, 50 balloons, we have 25 maps, and we've got 10 umbrellas. And basically all we're doing here is setting up a data structure like a database would, where we can then write, uh, this is $10, oh wait, these are balloons, balloons for $10 maybe a bit excessive. Let's say uh, like $2, $4, and $10. And so, we're gonna leave it in that format. I'm not gonna to touch any formatting in Google Sheets itself. That is the, the base structure we're gonna utilize. You could also utilize uh, other pieces like uh, price USD, and then we could uh, look up a um, Google function, which is Google Finance, uh, which you can then utilize to uh, convert the information to a different currency. Okay, and so I've utilized the Google Finance calculation uh, where we utilize the currency, AUD to USD, and then I'm just timesing it by the Australian dollar. So we've basically got the Australian dollar price here and then the USD price, which I'll just, I'm just gonna rename this now for price USD. So what we can do is we can specify all our information in Google Sheets here. I'm gonna call this um, spreadsheet just uh, testing real time. Oops, sorry, testing real-time data. I uh, just I have a name that suits for this. And what we need to do with, with this information, with this document itself, is take this base document here, and then we're going to uh, effectively publish this for anyone on the web to access. So it, it does become a public document um, so that anyone can theoretically access it. So firstly, we're gonna go to File, and then we're gonna go Publish to Web. And what we're gonna be utilizing is uh, to publish this entire document. Uh, we, we want this, this first sheet um, exported as a web page. And we don't need to restrict any of this information. Like we could restrict access to only certain people, but that's gonna make it quite difficult uh, to interact in the way we're going to. So we're gonna leave everything else just default. And we're gonna set the, the sheet to the one that we're developing on. And we're gonna utilize a web page. So hit publish and we wanna hit OK. And so this gives us a link to, uh, if we just copy and paste it in, we can see the real-time data there. Um, so if, if we change something like the number of balloons now to be 49, uh, and we refresh this page, we should see in a moment that information refresh. Uh, obviously there was a, a slight delay there, and that's because it has to effectively republish that document to the web. So once we've done that, we now have access to uh, our entire uh, information from anywhere 
uh, this, this is including Unity and what we're going to be doing, but it is also from any application. So utilizing that publish function is quite a, a good one. Now with that publish uh, feature, what we need to do is now access a specific URL. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to bring up uh, a notepad just so I can easily show this URL. Um, but it is to, sorry, I'm going to just set that back to this version so we can enlarge the uh, text size. What we have here is uh, spreadsheets.google.com forward slash feeds forward slash list. We need to get our specific ID to that document and forward slash OD6 public values question mark alt equals JSON. And this is going to allow us to take this spreadsheet document and then return it in a JSON format. So firstly, let's get the get the ID, which is sorry, which is this URL piece here. And we're going to bring that in. So we're going to replace the ID here, paste that in, copy the full URL. And if we enter that one into our browser now, we can see that we get this um, JSON list. And in here we have a few different pieces of information, but we have like our version number, our encoding, um, some feed information which a lot of this um, we don't need. So I'm just gonna collapse all of these. But what we do need is this entry section. So each entry in here, so this is an array of entry, there's an array of objects in here, which each object holds, again, an, a lot of information that we don't need, an ID, updated, category. Uh, we have some now text in here, which is like the balloon, the the actual then content for that balloon itself and in here we have these gsx dollar name dollar quantity dollar price dollar price usd with each individual value and this is the information that we're looking for so i'm also going to just collapse these ones but these four entries here relate to the four entries in each row so we have an array of objects and each object is the specific row in the document. So the first one we can see is balloon. The second one, if we scroll down, we can see is map. The third one we can see is umbrella. And so this is the basics to, well, here's the information we need to get from uh, this JSON file. How do we actually now do that in Unity itself? So let's jump across to Unity and get things going there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created a blank uh, Unity project here, just so we can get things cracking on, just a don't need to worry about any pre-existing stuff. So first off, what would we want to make it do when uh, we actually run the project? Like, do we want it to show text on the screen? Do we want it to manipulate something in the code? Well, right now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic text element. So we're going to go UI and text, and we're just going to have uh, this text element here is going to be utilized as a way to project the information out to the screen. So I'm just going to make the width 400, the height 400, just to you know try to prevent any information from not showing out to the screen. And my goal is to have something along the lines of uh, having like a balloon come out and then dash um, 50 left and then dollar two dollars and then in brackets uh, whatever the American price was which I think it was a dollar 47 and so that's what I want my output to look like so I would have that for each entry then underneath so we would see something like that but obviously with each entry's own information. For now, I'm just gonna leave this as empty, just so we know when the script is or isn't working, so I'm not getting confused on that perspective. Now, along with this, uh, we need to we'll need to set up some scripts in order to call to the server to obtain the information. Before we do that, what we're gonna build is just a simple game object that controls running the script. Uh, so I'm just gonna have a game, an empty game object here called uh, scripts. And this will just allow me to assign whatever script we build uh, to that game object so that it runs on start and runs on updates of frames and the likes. So that's the, the real simple basic build to Unity itself. Let's now go ahead and start getting our scripting side ready to go. So what we need to do now is utilize uh, Unity's JSON uh, utility in order to take that giant long string and bring it into different levels of objects. Now, before we do that, I want to take you through why we can't do that. So typically, when you utilize uh, JSON utility 
it would be setting up different uh, C sharp classes that uh, effectively have different levels. So normally you would have, uh, firstly, I'll just, I'll just do this at the bottom, this is not gonna be tree code, but we would have like a public class, which is the sheet entry. And so that was the values all that we just saw then, which in that you might have a, a public string, which is the version and also the encoding. And then also, what was our other item? If we just look back here. So we have version, encoding and feed. And so you might try and associate all those into uh, different variables here. And in fact, the feed uh, variable here would normally become another public class that we're entering. So if we call this sheet feed, and we set up another one just underneath it, uh, again, just for showing this off as an example. So then in the feed class, well, we would need to write out all the entries that are in this. Uh, so we've got like XML, NS, and again and again, and there's many different levels there. Now, fortunately, you don't need to specify every single item. You can only you can choose to only specify the ones that you want to utilize. So in our case, uh, we don't we don't actually need anything here other than the entry variable. So let's say we then defined uh, another piece which was public string entry, and. Sorry, I mis miswrote this. So we're saying that the sheet entry is the top level document. Inside that sheet entry, well actually we only need the feed uh, and the feed up is made up of an object called sheet feed. And inside that we also only need uh, the entry. Now this is gonna get confusing because I called this entry, so I'm gonna call it item. So the overall sheet is called sheet item. Then inside that is a variable called feed, which then is gonna be specified as sheet feed. And then inside that we have the entry. Now the entries themselves, if we go back to the uh, item here, is an array of different objects. Uh, but in these objects, there's only a few different items that we need, which is like the GSX name, and inside that is the letter T. And where this, where, where this is all leading towards is um, a giant issue that I ran into when trying to create this project for just as this for this example. So inside this, we're gonna have that each sheet uh, feed has a sheet entry. Uh, and inside that entry, we need to get the GSX name as one example, uh, which we'll call public sheet, uh, public sheets name, and that can be the variable name. And this is where we start to run into issues. So we would have public class sheet name and inside that we'll have a, dollar, or a public string, which is dollar $t. And, and this is where we start running into issues. So we have GSX dollar name and then inside that has a variable, an object called dollar $t. And in theory, this is typically how you would normally structure this process if you're utilizing the JSON from uh, the, the JSON utility from Unity um, by default. Unfortunately, inside it, it doesn't like or it doesn't expect to see dollar characters. And the dollar T is an issue. The dollar name at the end of the GSX is an issue, which means we can't utilize the core JSON utility that Unity offers. So what we do need to utilize is an alternative version uh, that is still supported in Unity. And I try to tend to move away or try to not look at bringing in external um, sources. We need to utilize the simple JSON parser uh, in order to use uh, a, a JSON object as just a standard object in Unity itself. So what we need to firstly do is download the framework uh, which I just utilized the GitHub link here on the wiki. And sorry, to, to get to this, um, it, it is it is simple JSON. Uh, it was my fault, I was miswriting it into the search. Uh, so if we search for Unity simple JSON, and then it's this first entry, the wiki.unity3d.com, and then index.php simple JSON. And inside this, we wanna use the GitHub link and from here, all I've done is I've hit download on this code repository. So I'm just gonna download the zip because I can't be bothered uh, waiting for all the time 
to set up to, to pull. Anyway, uh, we're then extracting that. So I'm just gonna open it and it will, it will extract the results. And so in here, what we're utilizing is where we're effectively needing to take all this information, copy it and put it into our scripts uh, area. So if we go back into Unity itself, go into our project view, in the scripts folder here, we want to drag and drop that information in here. And that's going to allow us to use it. So on the wiki, it does specify to create a plugins folder. Uh, trust me, I tried that, did not work. Create a scripts folder and it will work. And I, I don't know why. Don't, I don't, yeah, I can't answer, I can't answer why that works. Uh, it just does. Anyway, we're going to delete all that information because we no longer require that. What we're then going to be doing is we're going to be setting up the JSON pass uh, to, to, to take the adjacent object and turn it into an object. So uh, JSON string goes into the JSON.pass and we put it into a variable called O. Now, in order to use the uh, simple JSON parser, we also need to specify at the top here uh, using JSON, uh, simple JSON uh, to allow for this uh, to actually work. So once we've passed the JSON, uh, what we have is then an object that contains all the information in it as we require. Now the only complexity comes here where we need to iterate through each row. So what we need to do is run through a for each loop uh, so that we can take each value. So in this, we're going to be running a for each variable item. So we're going to create a new vi a variable called item in O, which is our object here. And then in brackets, you use brackets in this format, not dots, uh, because it's technically an array is effectively how I look at it. And we're going through each feed entry item to then create this variable called item. And so this item then has, if we go back to our JSON here, each of these items then is effectively these entries. So if we collapse this entry here, we can see these are all the uh, pieces inside this. And what we actually receive uh, in this for each loop is effectively a string. And so what we're then wanting to do is we're going to repass the JSON, uh, the string that we've received back. So what we're going to create is a sub item or item MO in this case. Uh, sorry, item O, object version of the item. And we're going to pay, throw it through that json.pass item again. And so what we get out of this uh, after <laughs> running through all this is the ability to take item O and then uh, say gsx dollar name dollar t. And that gives us the name object as an example. So the first one, it's like umbrella. Um, but this eventually now has given us the ability to access this. Now, the only weird thing that happens here is when we pass this into the JSON item, it actually turns it into an array. So we actually have to write the first object in that item array, get this value for it. So that is now the way that we're able to access uh, the each of the individual elements inside which is pretty awesome because it took me a very long time to get to that point. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to build a string, uh, which is going to be called like update text and we'll set it to empty at the start here. And what it's going to do is it's basically going to go through each entry and we're going to add information to the string. So I'm going to do real basic here. So we've got update text plus equals item O the name first, and then we're going to add uh, like the column and then we're going to add the quantity so this would be instead of dollar name it now becomes quantity and then plus and left because we wanted to say like 50 left or 49 left and then we've got the pipe and then we're going plus and we want to send in the price And then we want to send in brackets uh, the American price. And obviously this is a very long string um, and I'm just <laughs> simply concatenating all the pieces together. It's not particularly the best way to do it, but it's going to work for our example. And so this is then going to take, uh, sorry, and then I want a new line 
at the end of that. So that basically goes through, creates that string, creates a new line, creates the rest of the string in that same variable. And so what we want to do then is at the end, we want to have um, a text element here that we're calling uh, so that we can then update. So as part of this public class, we're going to set a public text element, which is called output area. And for the output area at the very end, we're going to update it to be the update text, assuming that we didn't get an error. So output area dot text equals update text. And what we need to do back in Unity now is we need to specify that text element. So this text element is the one that we want to update. So in scripts, uh, we should be seeing the text, although we aren't, there seems to be some sort of error. Oh, and that's my fault. So text is unknown right now. Uh, and that's my fault, my apologies. Uh, we need to include Unity engine UI into our using so that we can specify text as an actual thing. So now going back into Unity, uh, if we look at our scripts here, we now have this text to specify. So we're going to drag, drop the text on and, and I'm in play mode. I didn't even realize I was in play mode. That's my fault. Let's uh, do that again. <laughs> we'll drag and drop the text. And so now we should be at a point where we have a working state. So if we hit play, we should now see this word empty, get updated with our sheets, Google Sheets information, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so with that now in play, let's go back to our Google Sheets. So I'm gonna go back into the sheets.google, I'm gonna go into our document, testing real time. And so in here, we can see our balloon map umbrella. If I change the balloon quantity to 49 and we go back to Unity, you'll see that it still says 50 here. And if we stop and hit play again, it should now say 49, which it does. So what would be kind of cool is if that could update in real time rather than having to start and stop. So what we're gonna do is in Visual Studio, we're gonna run this coroutine on every update. Now, maybe this is not a great use of resources in the long run. For this example, it, it works perfectly. So we're gonna go back to Unity now, we're gonna hit play, and we may even split screen here just so you can see it happening at the same time, but let's say uh, the quantity is now 50, and we go back and it says 50 instantly. And in fact, I am gonna split screen this, so let's, drag these screens in a bit so that we can see between them. So if we now go into our area here, we hit 49 and we can see that update to 49. We want to change the price to $4. Well, we can see the price is now $4 in here. Uh, if we want to change it from a balloon to a uh, pencil at $4, we can. It now says pencil 49. If we wanted to add in uh, another piece, like a descriptor, uh, this is for my, and in this I'm just going to, I'm gonna turn this into a calculation, just so I don't have to copy and paste this. This is for my ampersand A2, A and we're just gonna copy and paste that down. Now that didn't automatically come in, and that's to be expected because we're not doing any sort of uh, automatic pulls of the information. So let's just pause that momentarily and go back to Visual Studio and build that in. So if we ever add a column into our area, what we do need to do is build that into the output formatting. So I'm gonna add uh, into this that after we've outputted the name, we're gonna add in that descriptor in brackets next to it. So we're gonna have a plus, and then we're gonna have an open bracket, and then we're gonna add our descriptor content, close the brackets, and do a double dots. And so what we need to set here then is our new variable, which we call descriptor. Hit save, and if we go back to Unity, and I'll open up Google Sheets at the same time again, if we hit play, we should now see pencil, this is for my pencil, map, this is for my map, umbrella, this is for my umbrella. I did not leave a space, unfortunately, that was my fault. <laughs> so it looks a bit squished in Unity there. So there we go, we added a little space and that looks much nicer now. So we'd say 50 and we could change this uh, back to balloon. Oops. 
and we could change the price to a dollar and we can see that reflect through in the other side. So it's just worth noting that whilst it is just taking whatever format or whatever content you put into uh, Google Sheets here, it does still work through calculations. So it does still take into account that we did a calculation on that price USD and also the descriptor and we'll bring that into Unity with that information uh, as the endpoint. But that's it, that is uh, our quick run through of taking Google Sheets and bringing it into Unity. May seem simple, but it was a real pain to bring that, um, to figure out the solution behind bringing in those values where there was a dollar at the start. It was uh, a lot of time spent on that. But anyway, that is, uh, yeah, it for the real time showing updates in Unity. And so that's it guys, we've gone through, we've taken out Google Sheet, we've brought it into Unity, and we're currently just displaying the information out the screen. But there are so many different possibilities that you could take this application and utilize it in whatever way you want. Guys, if you have any ideas for other videos, please drop them down in the comments, I'd be much appreciated. We're happy to try and take on anything that we can to help solve an issue for you guys. Till next time, have a great day, peace.